There we go. We are live. Uh, good morning, everybody. If you are joining us, hello. Um, welcome to another Book Week Live, which is super exciting. If you're joining on Catch Up, um, please do drop us a comment and let us know that you're watching on a replay. And let's just get into the chat. Before we chat about books, um, I thought I'd ask you a couple of either or questions just to kind of get to know you a little bit. Um, and then, yeah. we'll, then we'll chat books. So, are you a dog or a cat person? Oh, I would say cat, I think. Sorry if everyone who is dog, I know people hate it, but I am, yeah, I'm a cat person, I think, out of those two. Okay. Uh, are you a sweet or a salty person? Oh, used to be really sweet. And as the cliche goes, as I've got older, I've got a more savoury too, so I'm going to say salty. Okay. Um, coffee or tea? Oh, I don't really drink either. But if I go out, then I will have a coffee with friends. Okay. Uh, sunrise or sunset? Ooh, sunset. Okay. And then the last one, and my favourite one to ask, fruit or veg? Oh, gosh, I'm vegetarian, so it's all I eat. Um, <laughs> I think veg. Okay. That's always the one that people struggle with the most, so I love asking that one. Um, but, yeah, thank you um, so much for answering them. It's nice just to break the ice I guess a little bit. Um, thank you for joining me. Do you want to briefly introduce yourself to those people watching who don't have a clue who you are um, and then yeah. we'll chat further. Sure so I'm Anupa as you can see by my name. Um, I have been a primary school teacher for 17 years and I'm also a mum of two children so I've got a 10 year old boy and an 11 year old daughter and yeah last year when covid hit i started an instagram page but it was to talk about my body image journey um and then very quickly my focus sort of changed into supporting the young with their body image so i haven't talked this last year sadly as uh, my school weren't having any extra adults in but i've had loads of time to focus on supporting the young and obviously i've come here today to talk about the book that i've written which is the first part in my mission really yeah, so I've heard you read your book because you read it in a group I'm in on World Book Day, which and was amazing. Me and my daughter sat and listened to it. But for anybody who doesn't have a clue what your book is about, briefly let everyone know. Yeah, so it's called Sparrow Legs. This is the cover. Uh, oh, move it that way. And it's about a sparrow. So basically, my nickname at school, uh, at, at secondary school, was Sparrow Legs from my PE teacher. And um, I didn't dislike it. I had a good relationship with my PE teacher. It was a term of endearment. We were friends. He liked calling me Sparrow Legs. So that was fine. And when I started my Instagram page, I thought, oh, what should I call it? And that just popped into my head. Actually, yeah, I'm just going to embrace that this is my body. This is who I am. And I'm going to call my uh, page Sparrow Legs. And that's where the name of the book came from. So it's the story of a sparrow. Um, she starts off being sad because people are calling her names, but then she realizes how amazing her body is, that she needs to learn to love her own body and that her beauty lies within her. Amazing. And do you think that these days that's more and more vital for kids to kind of accept that principle? I really do think that. I mean, the more and more I see on social media, I always say when I go and speak to people in interviews that I didn't even I didn't even see Instagram till last April when I started my account. And it's shocking the pressure on the young of how they need to look. And I think the, the quote on the back of the book, actually, I'll read the quote. So this is from a PhD student at Bristol. And she says, children can begin judging others based on their appearance as early as four years old. And when I was sort of um, researching body image, it just shocked me that at such a young age, they were already thinking about their bodies, about other people's bodies. And yeah, so I think the conversation needs to start early, which is why I did a book for the young to start with. I do have a Facebook group, which is more for parents, carers, teachers, for us just to discuss how we can support things going forward. But yes, the answer is definitely, especially now with social media and the amount of channels we have on TV. And I could name the shows, but I'm sure you know them, the ones that are really pressured. And you imagine adolescents watching those programs and thinking that's the way my body needs to look, or that's how I need to appear, or that's how much makeup I have to wear to be accepted. Absolutely, I think like my daughter's eight and even she says, oh, I'm, I'm too fat, or I, I don't look the same as other people. And I'm like, nope, stop that right now. Um, but other parents aren't, aren't like that, don't have that conversation with their kids. So actually, 
getting it from somewhere else is really important for them. Yeah, and I think that's the thing. Obviously, we're going to talk today about the importance of reading and books and things. But one of those things is that this is to start a conversation because sometimes it doesn't feel natural to sit down and say, you know, whatever topic it might be about. Or, you know, shall we just sit down and talk about this or that? And sometimes books are a really useful way of just starting that conversation. And the other thing is because this book is for under sevens, it's not like you're explicitly having that conversation. It's just that you're talking around other things. So let's think about the amazing things that your body does or you know let's explore how sparrow feels in the story and hopefully those things will mean that children of the future when they are eight won't be saying oh you know i don't look like other people and i'm too fat because actually maybe their dialogue will be different maybe it'll be i know that you know um i'm bigger than so and so but actually it's really nice that we're all different because if we all look the same then that would be boring. And also, I know that even though I'm this size, my body lets me do this and this. So yeah, it is about opening up those conversations. Yeah, and like you said, books are a really, really great way of doing that. And yeah, we are like the theme of the talk is about the importance of reading and reading books from with kids from such a young age can really give them those messages that actually they don't always realise they're getting, but they really are. Yeah, definitely. I mean, even like, you know, lots of us have read Julia Donaldson books. And when you really delve into it, you realise that every book has a message. You know, I know it's fun to sing along to them and they're rhyming and it's lovely. But when you really look into it, there's definitely a message, you know, and whether it's about sharing, whether it's about forgiving, whether it's about compassion, all of those things are really important to teach our children. And we are doing that subliminally through I don't know if I said that right, but yeah, through through the books, you know, that we're reading, because like you say, that's one of the important reasons um, for reading. But, you know, I also think there's so many things that are nice about reading. You know, it gives us time with our children. We get to bond with them. It's about having family time together. Um, you know, I could go on forever because obviously as a teacher and a mum, I love books. So no, and I agree with you. I think that though, it's definitely time to to make that time with them, especially I guess when they get to school as well, they're encouraged to read by school to learn to read themselves. And you, we've got this thing where we put ten minutes aside when we get home from school. We, we get ourselves sorted, get ourselves um, bags unpacked, and we sit down and we read for ten minutes. And there are no distractions. That is just that specific time, and it is there's little precious family moments that can be important, but still vital to those kids learning as well. Yeah, and also like for adults, you know, now there's so much pressure in life and life can become overwhelming. And one of the things that's really, um, you know, sort of pushed in terms of mental health is to be mindful and have mindfulness. And reading is a form of mindfulness because while you're reading your mind doesn't honor the thing so actually for children if we're just having 10 minutes of reading and they're concentrating on that story and listening to the words then they're not thinking about other things so actually they're spending 10 minutes being mindful so it's a good routine for them to get into and like you say like my kids are 10 and 11 so they read their own books like really quite long books but we still read you know we still read quite short bedtime stories that are just fun to read and it is just for fun like you say bonding for the mindfulness and um, just so that they can you know relax and have that pressure lifted for a little bit yeah and i think actually um reading can be a relaxing thing it's kind of a way of escapism in a way for both kids and and adults to, to kind of sit down have a read a book take your mind to some to somewhere else and it is like you said it's mindfulness and it's relaxing and it's something to do to take your mind off whatever else is going on with you yeah and i'd definitely say even and attached to that relaxing side is that um, it's definitely great to have it as part of a routine because kids do, you know, they love routine, they thrive on routine. And even though my kids are 10 and 11, we definitely still have a routine. And sometimes they'll say, oh, my friends go to sleep at this time or my friends don't do this or my friends don't do that. But I say to them, but look how well you sleep. You know, they both go to sleep. Really, the doors are shut and everything's done by eight o'clock. We close the doors. They go to sleep, they might chat for a little bit because they're in the same room at the moment, but they might chat for a tiny bit, then they go to sleep themselves and we don't hear from them till half past six in the morning. And that's a good stretch of sleep that they're getting, but it's because they've got a routine. They still have a shower or a bath every night. They still do the reading. You know, it's all part of, 
I think they I think kids really need it you know and reading I think is a nice part of that routine you know because it's it's not just about getting ready it's not just about having a shower and doing things that they might feel are chores because whereas we like to have a shower and a bath they feel like it's probably a bit of a chore having a shower and a bath and why do we need to do that every day but the reading part they really enjoy yeah absolutely do would you say there's any tips that you could suggest to those parents that maybe their kids don't want to read and that are maybe really struggling in terms of getting their kids to read what would you maybe suggest I think, first of all, it's finding out what kind of books do your children like reading, because sometimes we force our ideas onto the children of what we think they should be reading at a certain age or what type of book. It might be that your child really loves reading, um, you know, nonfiction books. It might be that they just like looking at facts. And if that's what they like, it doesn't have to be a typical bedtime story. It doesn't have to be, you know, the Gruffalo or whatever. It can just be a book of facts and you just read five facts to each other because even that raises conversation and it's good for their learning as a teacher you know I'm going a bit off the topic now but as a teacher obviously one of the main benefits of reading is learning new vocabulary is learning um you know is being able to you um you know use your imagination but yeah I would say tips are ask them I think we just don't ask our kids enough what is it that you don't like about reading or what is it that you enjoy about reading or you know would you enjoy reading this type of book and also finding out because it doesn't always fit in in terms of the saying obviously like my children fit into the usual pattern of having a story before bed but it might be like you read when you come back from school and it might be certain children are just a bit too tired at bedtime and they say actually I'd prefer to read when I get home from school and that's okay as well so I think it's about putting the children in the centre and asking them what it is that they enjoy and when they would like to read and do you know the other thing is if they're really not enjoying reading if they're really showing that they don't like reading they're not enjoying it I would say just take the pressure off for a bit and don't read for a bit but have books around and it doesn't mean that you can't you know have books in their sort of environment that they may pick up because sometimes they'll pick up the oddest things as well like they might just pick up a recipe book that you've got out and they like looking through the recipes and it's still reading yeah I think that's a really great tip Emily is one of these kids that she has to pick her own book if you try and make her read a book she hates the books that school send home from her if she picks a book from her own shelf she will happily sit and read for as long as you let her um so yeah I would agree with that tip you said but pick and let them pick what they want what they want to read I think it's difficult because as a teacher I know in school obviously the children are given books because they're at their level and they haven't got the variety of books in school. And it might be that your child has quite a low um, reading level, but therefore some of the books that they're given are for them. They feel like they're really boring, you know, and they're just reading the same words over and over again. And at home, what you can do is read books. that, And it's 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 a fine line. I think it's a bit of a balance because I was going to say they can read any book they want to and pick it up but what you also don't want to do is that they lose their confidence in reading because it's too hard for them so it's having that balance but also actually another tip is that don't make them read then you just read to them because actually it's just as valuable for you to read to them so start off gently and say okay if you don't enjoy reading how about I read to you and then it can be like well I'll read a line and you read a line and I'll help you to read it so it's just about finding different ways around it and not to be too forceful, but it is an important skill. We know that reading is an important skill. So I wouldn't say we don't read at all because, you know, it is going to cause difficulties later on because it's part of our, it's part of everything we do. We have to be able to read to be able to learn, you know, so um, it is an important skill, but I'd say the more you push it, the more the kids sort of rebel against it, I think. Yeah, like you said, reading is part of everyday life, isn't it? We're all constantly reading, even just reading emails and messages and stuff. And if they've not learned those skills when they're little, they're going to struggle when they get older. But I think those tips are really helpful for anyone whose kids who just don't want to. The whole reason, and I think I said this to you when we first talked, that the whole reason for Book Week came from a conversation with a parent who just hated the idea of having to start reading with her child again because she felt like it was part of home homeschooling and home learning that she'd just not got on well, well with it when the schools were shut and she associated reading as part of that um 
so the idea was to encourage it as it's fun but also educational Mm. Um, again i think that's the thing isn't it with these books that they're given from school um you know and your books the book is the, from the gold box and your book is from the red box and you know it's a tick box exercise it can become a bit of a chore you know it's like i don't know i guess it's like if we got given um a recipe that we had to follow every day and cook the same meal or cook meals that we weren't interested in cooking that didn't light a spark in us you know it has to be things that they enjoy. So yes, they do have to sadly read the books that they're given in school because it is part of their development. And obviously teachers are wanting to support them moving forward. But I think also it's okay as parents, if we recognize in our children that they're struggling or that there's issues or they're not enjoying certain books, I think it's okay to go to school and say, actually, you know, my child is really not enjoying those books. Is there any other option of things that we can do? Or can you recommend you know books along this line or it's out we are in control and I think that's the thing I think we feel a bit out of control because they're given this book they have to do it and it's like you say even with the homework it becomes very difficult because it's prescribed it isn't they're not choosing it and it's a tricky one unless you're homeschooling because we do have to follow certain guidelines and do certain things but yeah I would say that maybe also have that balance that, you know, if we read a little bit of your school book, then we can also read a little bit of that. And it might be comics and things as well. My kids really love comics. Um, so we've bought a few comics lately and, um, you know, it might just be let's read 10 lines. And I think if you give them an amount, you know, if you say let's just read a page, it's a bit more um, structure. You know, you're letting them know that they only have to read this amount. Whereas if you say, oh, well, let's read your book, they sort of automatically think, oh, I don't want to read my whole book. And it brings the fear in them. So break it up, you know, because I think sometimes even as adults, I know lately I've been involved in a couple of book clubs and then I'm like panicking. Oh, my God, I've got to read this book. And, and it takes the enjoyment out of it. I'm like, oh, I just want to read for pleasure. But maybe in my mind, if I just said to myself, OK, every night I just read 20 pages it may have been more manageable than not reading it and then the week before going, oh, God, I've got to read the whole book. <laughs> uh, I second agree with you there. I've been <laughs> reviewing a book for um, a brand, actually, and I've just struggled reading it, but I know I've got to finish it, and I think, actually, I should have done that, just kind of write a chapter a night or something and just break yeah. it down because it just felt like a, such a slog to finish it. I finally finished it last night, and, yeah, I think, actually, breaking it down would probably help both kids and adults actually yeah and I think that's the great thing isn't it that actually with reading it isn't about sit, them sitting down and reading a whole hundred pages of a book if they're just doing a tiny bit every day it's going to be helpful and like in the same way that we sometimes say oh yeah when we're cooking you know we can put maths into cooking because we can get them to weigh the measurements and stuff in the same way you know if you've got a recipe that you've printed out or whatever ask them to read a sentence of it you know say oh can you just read me how we need to, uh, what we need to do with the um, ingredients that we've got or whatever it might be. We can find a way around it. It's just, it's just finding what works for your child. It's hard unless you know a specific child. Like I know as a teacher, I would definitely try and work out my children and what works for them and do a bit of everything that suits everyone. But I, I do think kids love to be read to. So if nothing else, I would just keep reading and reading to children because my children still love being read to at the age they are. Don't ever, don't ever stop reading to them until they really shut the door in your face, you know, because I think, I think all of it benefits everybody. Yeah, I 100% agree with you. And, and thank you so much for all those tips. I'm sure they will help lots and lots of other people um, that are watching this. So like I said, if you've watched on Catch Up, make sure you leave us a comment and let us know if any of these tips have helped you because I'm sure um it'd be great to find out if they have and if you're struggling with anything in particular um off comment i'm sure there'll be other parents who can can help um but yeah thank you so much for joining me and chatting about that i really found that useful just for me and i'm sure other people watching would have done the same <laughs> yeah i think sometimes you know i think it is just about sharing like all of us just talking about things that we might know a little bit about or a lot about like um, you know, obviously my group is about body image and today I've got a guest speaker in and I'm going to be doing that as well, like you are, because sometimes you just need someone else to say, actually, this is my experience. And someone goes, oh, yeah, actually, that I, that resonates with what I feel as well. So it's all of us just working together to help the next generations, isn't it, in every way we can. So, yeah, it's been really great being on here. And if anyone wants to join my group or 
wants to buy the book, then I'll pop the details in the comments. I was just going to say, make sure you um, pop all your details in the comments and then we're going to pop and do that. But yeah, thank you. Um, thank you again for joining me. It was lovely to chat. And um, yeah, we will leave the live there. Thank you for everyone who's been watching Book Week. It's been amazing. I've loved it so much so far. And um, there's more Book Week content the rest of the day until Sunday, I think is the last day of Book Week stuff. So keep watching for more. That's brilliant. Thank you.